Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Keenan Higgs Higgins coming to you with another Black America Web exclusive. Let me take off the stunners because we're getting ready for Tribeca Film Festival. And I have a special guest with me who won huge last year with his feature film, um, Mr. David Fortune. What's going on, man? Let, like, please talk to me about what's going on and just big win, um, the movie that you have going on, and just a little bit about like what got you to this level in the Tribeca Film Festival? Man, um, there's so much going on. Um, we just completed the film, it's sent out, it's ready to be shown and experienced by a large community of people. Um, so, you know, the name of our film is called Color Book and it's about a single father raising his son who has Down syndrome. And as a way to deal with the loss of his wife, him and his son go to their first ever baseball game. And we learn pretty much what's the experience of a single parent raising a child who has a disability. Um, you know, for me, I just want to tell an intimate story of a black father and his son who had Down syndrome and showcase the love and the bond between black men and black boys that we often don't get a chance to see in cinema. And so it's been a beautiful experience making this film with Will Catlett, who brought an amazing performance um, and introducing a new actor named Jeremiah Daniels, who this was his first time acting in film period. And so I just can't wait for the world to see just their bond, their intimate connection, because it's just so beautiful to see in film. Yeah, and I, the thing I loved about this film is that there's so many different nuances to it. You have the fact that you're shooting it in black and white. You have yeah. the fact that it touches on like, uh, um help like not, not mental health uh but like a physical like ableism i should say yeah. um have the the regional story of being in atlanta and then you add to this whole um side of it the the, the sportsmanship and that whole baseball story so it's yeah. like there's there's so many different areas like where where does it start for you like where did you start and how did it build from there hmm that's a really good question because for me, it's just started off with, you know, one, making a film that you want to see. Mm -hmm. Like, I would, like, I think it was about 2018. I was just really wanting to see a film about a father and son. Like, I had the image of a Black man and his small son. I just wanted to see that on screen more. And just that desire to just, like, you know, even write it to me was just enough. Um, and then, you know, as I begin to just start writing a short film about a father teaching his son, you know, who has Down syndrome, how to play baseball, I was like, hmm, let's expand this story. Let's go into the world of like, how do they wake up? What do they do as a routine? Do they pray together? Do they laugh together? Do, what breakfast items do they cook? You know, what is their day to day life? And I just want to take this small story and expand it for a larger audience to experience and take in. And um, I remember feeling the idea of wanting to tell a father-son story, but also wanting to highlight a community of people within the Black community that felt like wasn't being recognized in the media and in cinema. And, you know, when it comes to the disability community within the Black community, I just felt like, man, we need to see more of their experiences on film. Mm -hmm. um, we, we see it within other ethnicities and racial dynamics, but we don't see it within our own culture as much. And just emerging those two or merging those two kind of like ideas together felt intimate and it felt right to share. Um, but honestly, it just started off with just wanting to see an image of a black man and his son together just walking down the street. That was amazing. And then it's so interesting because as black storytellers from all spec from the whole spectrum, like yeah. you could tell the most amazing story and then <laughs> because of funding or because of whatever reason hey because of even your skin color you may not be able to get it seen or heard from the masses as it should whereas in your case not only were you able to enter this untold stories um competition but you won it and you won a million dollars you know what I mean? so what was that experience even like coming to something as prestigious and as long-standing as tribeca film festival and really hitting big yeah, you know, there's so many things that's outside of your control. Um, whenever you go out to make a film, it's almost a sense that you got to pitch it and it has to be received by the world to either make it. Um, and I just remember after I wrote it, I told myself, whether someone says we're going to make this or not, I feel good about it. If this just lived as a piece of literature in my, you know, uh, final draft folder, then you know what? 
I'm okay with it. And I'm, you know, good as it, it is. And to me, I, I'm good that it's like it never see the light of day because I know that it exists in this universe of zeitgeist. And I know that if somebody wants to see it, here it is. And, um, you know, after I saw like the, uh, the competition portal open, I was like, you know what? Why not submit this? Because when we talk about untold stories, it's like, you know, I, you know, I haven't watched every movie in cinema, but I'm like, you're not often seeing these type of, you know, dynamics in film. And in submitting, again, I just left it as it is. I said, if they decide to choose it, great. If not, I'm proud of what I wrote and I'm satisfied with that. And as you know, they got back to me and said, hey, you made the top 10. I was like, okay, we getting somewhere. We heard you, we heard you. <laughs> with Greece now. All right, all right. You know, um, and but then that just ballooned to then me getting selected into the top five. And from there, it was like, you know what? Let me make a pitch video that pays tribute to not just Atlanta, um, not just the disability community, but also to the black experience and black men. And when I uh, plan to showcase it um, at the pitch, you know, again, my whole goal was don't focus on winning, just focus on leaving your mark. Focus on impacting the people who's gonna watch this pitch video. And if people are left impacted or changed after the screening or the pitch, then you did your job. You know, it's not about winning, but it's about how you're servicing the, the human experience. And after we did the pitch, I felt like I completed my job. And so whether I won or didn't win, it didn't matter because I know that people was introduced to a possibility of a story of a black father raising someone with Down syndrome. And that's all I needed. And, and it's just, it it really just comes together as a real Cinderella story. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's just, it really is dynamic that you are here. And yeah. I know that it just began for you, but is there any yeah. way that you can answer a question of what's next for you in the film and just this trajectory of like mm. the win? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, the main thing, and, and, to, and my apologies if I didn't even answer the question, even like what did it feel like to win? Um, it, like, you got time. <laughs> it, yeah. You know, it, like winning was just such a overwhelming experience. You know, because now this story that just started as a short film about a father trying to teach his son how to play baseball has now came into a feature film and is ready to be produced and made and premiere at Tribeca. And um, I just remember just feeling a, a sense of joy, but also a sense of responsibility that I get to bring the story to life and I could shape it into the viewpoint of how I wanted to present it. And Tribeca has been so supportive um, on that front as far as just really pushing my vision and supporting my voice in one shooting in black and white, which isn't always the popular choice cinematically, um, but then also telling more of a slice of life that is quietly paced and feels very more quiet romantic. And they really wanted me to exercise my voice within my community. And so it has been a beautiful experience. Um, and as it relates to now, you know, screening at Tribeca and premiering it here and what's going to come afterwards, you know, I, I'm just ready for people to just experience these two lives. And for me, that's the joy I take from it. Um, it's not about what I give, but it's, my, it's about what do I receive. No, it's not about what I give, but it's about what I, you know, present and, you know, what do I share with the world? And um, I'm just really happy to for people to experience it and see it on a large screen for the first time and just feel what every emotion that the film presents to them. And moving forward, you know, the big thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to sleep. Ah! <laughs> that's the first, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Um, so many late night hours, I'm just ready to go to sleep for a couple hours or for a few weeks at, at that and just recover, you know, get my body right, get my mental right, because making films is hard, it's difficult. Um, and so that's the first priority is to take care of self. And then after that, you know, uh, continue to push the film for the rest of the world to see it. So just not showing it at Tribeca, but taking it to other festivals, other parts of the world, right? Just not in the United States, but like, hey, can this film be shown in Germany? Can this film be shown in Japan? Could we get, you know, you know, an experience from someone who's on the completely other side of the world to come to Atlanta, right? And immerse themselves in Atlanta for an hour and a half and experience what is it like for, you know, a father raising a son and just be totally transfixed by that. 
Um, and so for me, that's the main goal is just not to just have it live at Tribeca, but to have the world see it as well. Um, and, you know, from after I come from my two week hiatus of rest and sleep, you know, I just want to write more. I want to tell more intimate stories like Color Book and show black people in a more intimate and compassionate fashion. Um, so that's pretty much my goal afterwards. All right. Well, listen, I am wishing you nothing but good siesta and sleep for at least the next week <laughs> and when you wake up we will be in a whole new world with uh, a new burgeoning black filmmaker on the yeah. scene and i am excited to see the film i know that a lot of people are as well yeah. uh and it's a year of build up and a year of anticipation so let's do it and i yeah. shall see you at black uh, well, not, I'm going to say Black Tribeca, but hey, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I'll see y'all at Tribeca Film Festival. Thank you so much, Dave. No, I'm all for it. I'm all for it in Radiant Game. So thank you.